96.5 TDY. We're here at the Odyssey headquarters hanging out with Benson Boone. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Is this your first time to Philly? It is, actually. Yeah, I'm looking forward to you, uh, getting been in town? Philly cheesesteak. Yeah? Um, I've been in town now 13 hours. Okay. And no yeah. cheesesteak yet? No cheesesteak yet. I've had some, some scrambled eggs and potatoes. Do you know where you're going for a cheesesteak? I was hoping you would know. So my favorite place, and I've taken Sarah there before, is called Jim's, and it's right by the TLA on South Street. The problem with it is it burned down uh, like three months ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so if you make your way out to like the Roxborough area, which I think you might be going to later, uh, Delessandro's is a good spot. Delessandro. And maybe get a t-shirt. Uh, Pete Davidson was rocking a, a Delessandro's t-shirt I saw the other day on, on TikTok. So okay. if that's any... That's that's the endorsement right there. Is Pete Davidson loves it. That's all you need. And you're coming to the city on a good day. Uh, we're we're on a high. We had a big win yesterday against the Lions. Like every everybody here is very excited. Are you growing up in Washington? Are you a Seahawks fan? I am. I am. Yeah. What do you think? In the games tonight, what do you think? It is, it is. It is. a little sad seeing uh seeing Russ seeing with the other Russ jersey on the on. other team, but you know, it is what it is, and he did what he had to do. So hopefully we we show him. Yeah. We show him. Go Gino. What's up? Right. <laughs> see, what, we do. see what happens all right well let's take it back so you grew up in washington big family right like you you had a lot of siblings and you were the only boy four sisters yeah four sisters how did that like shape your perspective growing up as, as a person with with you kind of being the lone wolf on, amongst all women yeah yeah i definitely think um i am a lot more in touch with my emotional side um but also like it's just been nice because we're all we're all really close yeah we're always best friends. What's, so the, what's the age range? Oldest is 24, youngest is 13. Okay, and so I'm you're right, 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 in, right middle. in the middle. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that, that is a nice little, uh, nice way to grow up with having a little bit of every every perspective there. Totally. Yeah, it's it's great. And so, you know, we're all just there for each other, but they're all they're all wonderful. Now, being out east, I would imagine there's a lot of us that have never been to that part of the country. I've never been to the Northwest. I've, I've always have wanted to. Yeah. If you were to sell me on it, like if you were making a commercial for Washington, you go, "This is these are the three reasons why you got to go." How are what do you how are you sell me on this? Honestly, me personally, I would I would sell you on the nature. Yeah, like I will assure you, I have I have never seen anything more beautiful than the places I've been in the Pacific Northwest, especially Washington. Like I grew up very outdoors. A lot of a lot of hiking and backpacking, and it's just every time I'm out in the nature there, backpacking or at a lake or just cliff jumping with my buddies, like wait, it wait, really you is. Cli- you say cliff jumping? Cliff jumping. What's that like? What do you what do you, you like? Just jump off a cliff and hope that you so survive, or like what it, happens? It's <laughs> like we'll go usually like fifty to seventy feet, just a cliff next to the water, and you oh, okay, just, you jump yeah, in the yeah, water. Yeah. Not not rocks, yeah. You got so that, you that's like, more advanced. So do you like go down there? You make sure like you you're deep enough that nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, and then you send it. And you ne- no one no friends have had any major injuries or anything doing this. Not any major <laughs> injuries. <laughs> Just a couple scratches. Just a couple <laughs> couple bumps and scratches, but All right. All it is right. really like truly the most beautiful place. Yeah, yeah. Ever. Everyone that I've talked to that's been up to like Seattle or you know Portland or any of those types of places, they've said like. It's amazing. Got to yeah. go. So yeah. it's, all, it's on my to-do list. Uh, how'd you get into music in the first place? Like, where did you where did you start? How did you realize that this is something you'd w- even want to do? Um, so I didn't actually really realize I could sing until a little over two and a half years ago. Wow. Um, and it was senior year of high school. Oh, we wow. were doing um, but like a battle of the bands competition. And I played piano a little bit growing up. My mm-hmm. sisters all took lessons, and so I just kind of played by ear. But that was kind of the only musical thing I did. Wow. And then my buddy asked me if I could play the piano for his band, and I was like, of course. And, you know, the day before, the singer quit. And so one of us had to sing, and I just gave it a shot, and here we are. Was it an original song, or was it a cover? It was they, they were covers. What was what was the song? It was The Good Parts by Andy Grammer, Havana, Shallow by Lady Gaga, and then Oh Royals, I think, by Lord. Wow. 
So it was it was a, it was a bit of a mix up, but yeah. like, yeah, it was a great day, and it surprised me a lot. And my parents were front row. They so you just started even... singing. And you're like, wait, this is actually good. Yeah, <laughs> and it was it was like really just one of the craziest experiences I've ever had. So did you guys win the battle of the bands? We did. Nice. We did. And that was the moment for you that was like, all right, I'm gonna go try to do this thing now. That after that, it was like I started posting videos on social media. I still wasn't like. Music is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. So I I went to college in I mean, one semester. But that's when American Idol happened and all that. What artists did you love growing up? Uh, growing up, it was kind of a mix of like Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, uh, Sam Smith, Adele. Those those were probably so my always, four. Always like soulful, but like through the eras. Exactly. And so I th- I definitely think when I started singing, like, I took after that type of music because it's what I grew up on. Um, and, and nowadays it's a, it, like Giveon. Is, is he on that list? And guys like... Definitely. You know, guys like that for sure. Harry Styles. Yeah. Like, it's it's starting to get a little more variety in different genres of music, but still very much on a soulful level. So you touched on it. Your journey's super interesting, not only because it's been so short, but also you've kind of done the new school and old school approach where it's like, TikTok, but also American Idol. Yeah. Like, so if you, now that you've done both those things, if you were to get advice to somebody else that was like wanting to get their name out there or, or start a music career, how to get noticed, what would, you, what would you say is the right path or is there a right path? You know, I really don't think there is a, like, like one right path. It's, it's, it's hard to say because everybody has their own voice and everybody has their own talent and everybody has their own story. And so, you know, my, like like going the American Idol and then TikTok route like partially worked for me, but like would would someone else have the same outcome? Probably not. Right. Um. But really, I I think the main thing is when you are passionate about something and you work hard and work smart to get to where you want to be. Like that's that's I mean that's all you can do. Right. Like. A lot of people will have these dreams and these passions, and it's like they never do anything about it. And, you know, I, th- I think we all kind of have those things in life where, like, there's always that one thing we want to do, but we never really get around to it. Right. But, like, if you really want to do something, I personally believe that if that's what you're meant to do, you will do it. And right. if you work hard enough and study enough and plan enough, then, then you'll get to your, like, your end goal. Especially if you're young, like I don't want to get all Gary V, but it's like you got you got nothing but time. Like you're so yeah. young, like if you have the time on your hands, you're not working full time job yet, or if you're in school or whatever, it's like yeah, that, that's the time to go chase those things. It's exactly. like pour everything into your passion before yeah. you get old and you know yeah. have responsibilities and all that stuff. Um, so Ghost Town's kind of the song that really like put you on the map, and it wasn't just something that worked in the U.S. This is like a global thing. I mean, could you ever imagine that you'd have a song that would like make you known in Norwegia or where, you know, like where in Norway or no, not at all. Like, you know, like you go around, like people know it in every country. Yeah. That was such a wild day. My manager, Jeff, um, he, he came in to my apartment and he's like, Bets, dude, you're number one in Norway. Yeah. And I was like, that is so cool. What is Norway? Point it out on a map for yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, that was just such a crazy a crazy feeling like somewhere that is literally on the opposite side of the world that is, you know, streaming my music at an insane level. And it's like, that is a great feeling. It is a great feeling to know that like something that I am now very passionate about, like that, that the work is paying off. Yeah. Um, Have you gotten to visit any of these places yet? Yeah. Yeah. I've been to Europe a couple of times now and in a few weeks, I'm going to Australia, New Zealand, wow. Korea. We were supposed to go to Singapore and Japan, but it's kind of hard to get into those countries right now. So right. we'll see. When you're traveling, do you like get nervous to go anywhere? Like if you go to a place like Korea, like that's totally different culture than what you're used to. Are you, is that exciting? Is that like, oh, I don't know what to do? Or like, it's, what- it's super exciting. Yeah. Like I, I personally believe the U.S. is very like uncultured. Like, oh, like we, we definitely have like our own vibe. And that is lovely, but like I want to experience everything, and so at some point I want to go as many places as I can go. So 
these opportunities are yeah you want to do the, the benson boone world tour at some point and just yeah. go for like a year or two or and just that would be see so see the world crazy. yeah uh you got a new ep out mm-hmm. just dropped it uh, at the end of july walk me home what was the inspiration behind not only the name but like the the tracks you have on it yeah um so i've been writing now just a little over a year and you know when i released walk me home like i had been writing for a year um and it's kind of been a really crazy year for me because this isn't something I was always, you know, dreaming of or expecting to be doing. Um, and, I, and I feel like I've kind of just been through this crazy, like, flash of, like, everything coming at me really fast. And as wonderful and as as cool as that is, like, it is a lot to process. Um, and, you know, I, I a lot of times can feel very alone and a lot of times overwhelmed, but like through all that, I always am writing songs, and those are kind of they've been very therapeutic for me. Um, and so, you know, some of these songs that are on the EP, I I they were like the first songs I had ever written. Wow! And so it was kind of like this, just like the, an EP of my emotion over, over the past year. And the reason I called it Walk Me Home is like these songs have really helped bring me to like a place where I'm very happy and I, and I like know this is what I want to do the rest of my life. And so for me, like this is home. And those songs have, have walked me there, have, right. have brought me home. I mean, it does take a lot of balls, I would say, is just like being able to, not because these are the first songs you're writing, right? And, yeah. And, I guess you have to have confidence that they're good to put them out, right? Yeah, <laughs> and totally. they are good. But but you have to have that confidence to, to say like, this is what I got right now, and and they're ready. These are the first ones. I mean, does, do you ever second guess yourself, or are, are you always like confident in what you're putting out? Um, Just I mean, being this new. Yeah, there there definitely is like a level of just like unsurety where, you know, it's it's a pretty personal piece of work that I'm releasing. Right. And that is like, it feels very vulnerable at times, but, um, you know, I feel like, like naturally I just, I'm just ready for the world to see who I am. And so I just give it all I can give and see how it goes. So yeah. I, I feel like usually like I'm a little on the, on the confident side, just, I think, you, I think you have to be, but it's, but it's great because it's, it's true to you. It's not like, uh, you're putting out club bangers that like anybody could make. These are songs yeah. that only you could make. And I think that's gotta be gratifying knowing that. It is. Yeah. It's, it's nice. Like having something a little different or, or that feels a little more personal. Right. And you're finding yourself, are you finding yourself writing more in those times of, of being alone and, and, and having your emotional moments? Are you in the car? It, it, spontaneous like where yeah. do you find yourself writing the most you know for like ideas like when i just take little voice memos throughout the day like it is always so random i'm i kind of just am always thinking of like little small ideas whether it's like a verse idea or a chorus idea but i bring those all into the studio when i go into this, like to a studio i just kind of come with everything i can give and just Kind of like in sports, I just leave it all on the field. And so I just make sure when I leave, like, I gave it my best. And so usually I'll I'll just about always write in the studio, but ideas come from just whenever and wherever. I was listening to an interview with John Legend yesterday, and he was talking about how he typically um, writes lyrics uh, second, and he he writes melodies first. Like, he'll mumble tracks. That's what I do. You you, you come up with, like, what the song is going to sound like, and you'll just kind of hum it. And then piece the words together later. Yeah, it's weird. Like when I when I sing a melody that I've just thought of, I'll always like I never hum a melody. I'll always sing random words. Yeah. But the words that I'm singing are like I say it with the vowels that feel right for that part, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then I try to write like catering to those vowels because like that's what helps me sing the most natural. So yeah, it's weird. So somebody. Uh, like heard the voice note in its in its original form, they would be like, "This is a crazy person, just like not really making a lot yeah, of sense." Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. to you, it's like this is going to make this is going to be good. You just have to wait till the final product. Exactly, exactly. 
Uh, so what's next? You got a, a full album coming, tours? Like what, what's happening next in your world? It's kind of like we're kind of figuring that all out right now. I have some songs that I'm very, very excited about right now. And, you know, I'm just kind of taking it day by day. Like I think I'll definitely release a few more singles first before another body of work. But definitely in 2023, um, an album from Benson Boone will be coming. We love it. Benson Boone, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.